All right, the topic for discussion today is training economy or what I've taken to call training economy 2.0. It's reasonably common to talk about the how efficient training is. Um, I've singled out before how barbell lifting is can be particularly efficient if you really zero in on the, the big basic movements. Particularly for beginner, that's a very quick way to get stronger. Um, and that's one side of the coin in terms of efficiency. Um, but it doesn't really have a look at the whole, can we say, the whole picture of the context in which that training occurs. Um, and like one egregious example would be driving uh, for hours to go to a gym uh, to have a relatively brief wor workout and then drive home again for hours or a hour, an hour. So that would be a very clear example of, well, what you're doing in the gym itself uh, might be efficient in, in a very like, narrow way of looking at things. But if you include the, um, the time spent driving, then that, that you know, say gain in efficiency like, it evaporates. Of course, you still get the benefits of the workout, um, but um, you can't really look at that and say that's an efficient way to, to spend your time. Uh, particularly in the case of sitting in a car driving somewhere, uh, to have a workout, it becomes even uh, more obscure uh, because if you did the workout somewhere else, maybe you could spend those hours uh, walking, which is or being like doing some kind of uh, manual work around the house or anything that's active that would otherwise be of benefit. Um, either you do something that you needed to do or you do some kind of manual work that also builds on your on your strength or your conditioning in some way. So training economy when looked at properly um, asks this question from the context of the, the person's whole life. Um, which is one reason why I always uh, come back to training at home um, in various ways. Um, and that's particularly because of this, if you have to spend a lot of time taking yourself to a gym, um, and go through the whole routine of changing clothes and then train and then the shower routine and then come back home, you've spent possibly three hours to have an hour's worth of work. Now, in general, with uh, strength work, but any kind of uh, physical training, it tends to be better if it's done more frequently. So it's much better to have a slightly briefer workout and then have it either every day or at least quite a few times a week, rather than have like one massive session. So if you look at these sessions, let's say you do 20 minutes. Uh, it's a lot better to have five or six sessions of 20 minutes, which works out to what uh, just shy of two hours uh, over a week, uh, rather than have one big two hour session um, at some point during the week. And then if you include the transport time and other things in that two hour session, uh, the ratios is even even more off. So it may be that there's ways of training that can be more effective uh, when viewed in quite a like a narrow scope. Um, but if if you consider that you could um, they train more often, maybe you have to train in a different modality. Uh, but if you have the ability to then train more often, um, the the equation might work out uh, quite a bit differently. Um, just as an aside here, um, I am definitely finding that in terms of uh, efficiency of training that some kind of loaded training needs to happen for the lower body when we're talking about strength. The upper body is a little bit, uh, can be different. Um, but that can still be done in, in a home scenario. 
Uh, there's obviously also the, the possibility of combining gym and home workouts. So maybe you do one or two sessions in a in the gym and you do other stuff at home. That's that can be quite a nice uh, way to do it. Um, I'm also quite a big fan of um, what I've taken to call mini workouts. So instead of, um, and I don't know where that really, when we talk about training, we often think about like, okay, you have to do a workout and then it has to be, there's this idea of like, it has to be an hour's worth of work. That's a workout. Um, I quite like the, the mini workouts. That's either an additional workout if you've already had a larger workout on a day or you split up uh, a larger workout into two or you just you don't have so much time on a given day so you focus on one particular physical quality and then you just work on that for anywhere from 5 to, to 20 minutes I would characterize that as a as a mini workout and that's definitely part of the, the picture when talking about um, training economy so there's the training economy is really about looking at um, the larger picture and seeing if you can kind of move things around and maybe some of the ways that you are that we're used to doing things um, that our time can be spent uh, better so the and the time that we spend just driving somewhere like if we can eliminate time uh, from our lives where we're just sitting stuck in traffic, I think we're better off for a bunch of reasons, not just because of uh, training efficiency. Um, so this obviously ties into like, how we experience things. So it's generally a more enjoyable uh, experience. Um, either you walk to where you train or you train from home and then you get to spend the time on things that are more enjoyable to you. So. This is definitely part of the, the larger picture of, of hybrid training as well. Um, to look at things and say, like, okay, we can, there's more ways to train than just the, the box standard ones. So yeah, training economy, have a look at uh, how the training is structured. Could it be, could some of that training be done in a different place? Um, how to cut it up and move it around so we spend our time uh, more efficiently. Yeah, training economy.